Hey everybody, welcome back to another Plague Ridden episode of Permaslug. Obviously, as you can hear in my voice, I'm still not feeling all that well, same from the last episode, but we're going to power through this because today I want to bring you something that I've been meaning to check out for a long time and finally had a chance to. So basically this website is loader.io and as you can see on your screen, it will allow you to load test your website, which is something I've wanted to do for quite a while just because I've always been curious what can a server actually handle. So we're gonna go ahead and use this. They do have a free plan, so if we take a quick look, you can see here that you can have up to one domain. You can do basically a one minute test and have two different URLs on that test, which is pretty cool. The other plans are pretty self-explanatory, but we're gonna walk through the free one today and I'm gonna show you how this works. Now, once you set up your account, what you're greeted with is this new host screen. And what that asks you to do is basically configure a domain. So I'm gonna use a real life website that I have on a Cloudways one gigabyte server. So this thing is really small, but I wanna see how hard you can push a one gigabyte server on a pretty small site. This site that I have is basically just like a very simple blog that just talks about some beach access locations in my town, but I figured it'd be kind of a cool thing to show in this case. So the website is called destinbeachaccess.com. And so now what it's gonna have us do is download this file that we effectively just need to FTP into our server so that it can verify we actually own the domain. So once you have that file uploaded to your site, all you need to do is click on verify. It's gonna go out and check that you actually own the domain. For me, because I've already done it, this goes extremely quickly, but for you, it does take a couple of minutes for it to go out and run its test. But now you're able to go ahead and start the load testing. So now we can just name this test whatever we want. So let's just call this like DBA load test, DBA being the website name, Destin Beach Access. Now the test type is pretty important for you to consider here. So clients per test is basically gonna take this number right here and distribute it out over one minute. So, you know, 60 seconds on this free plan. And then the other option here is clients per second. So 250 is an absolutely massive number because what's gonna end up happening is it pushes 250 clients to your website every single second for 60 seconds. So that's an insane amount of traffic. If you do that math for how much that actually is over the course of a month, the, the number is just astronomical. So to be realistic about this, let's do clients per second, but because we're on a one gigabyte server, let's drop this down to like 25, which even that is a massive traffic spike. I would not want any kind of traffic spike on this one gig server. The stuff that I have on this site, I anticipate to never get any kind of surge in traffic, but you can go ahead and play with this to think whatever is gonna be realistic for you. I would go look at my analytics and just decide based on what I see on a typical month and maybe what I expect it to go up to, then you know you could change the client and the test type here. But the other thing to consider is that this really does put a load on your server. So if we go over here to Cloudways real quick, you can see from my tests earlier, Cloudways was not happy. This server was struggling. So you can see that the CPU usage was, ma was maxed out and the RAM was nearly maxed out as well. At one point, the RAM was completely maxed, but I was trying to push like 50 or 60 concurrent connections every second to this server just to see how far it could go. But you just need to be realistic about this. This really will put an impact on your server. So if this is a live server, I would definitely consider when you're running the test at the very least. Maybe do it late at night or whenever you have the lowest amount of traffic. Now coming back over here, of course, we have it set up to 25 clients per second for one minute. I'm honestly not quite sure this server is gonna be able to handle this, but what you can do is set an error threshold here. So if 50% of the connections start timing out, then the test will be aborted. So if we go ahead and just scroll down here, we have a few more options. So you can change the method here. So like Git would basically just be a page view, post would be like submitting a form or you know publishing some sort of data to the site. And you have a few other options, but I'm just gonna leave it as Git for the moment. And then of course you can change it to be a specific path. So if you want it to go to a certain page on your website, you can do that. You can also change headers. You can see a couple other options here. This is all definitely advanced stuff. So I'm gonna leave that alone. But what you can do is also add a second request. So if you remember from earlier, we looked at that free plan and you can have it run to a second page, which actually I didn't do. So I'm gonna try it this time. So on this website, the other URL is slash all accesses. So I'm gonna do that. And so basically, let's just go ahead and run this test. Like I said, I don't think this server is gonna be able to handle it, but I am interested to see what actually happens. So run. So you can see the graph has started now and let's see what happens. So there it goes. The test was aborted because it reached the error threshold. 
And that happened pretty quickly. So we basically got 50 people on there before it aired out. So we got about two full rounds of connections. So we definitely pushed that too far. So let's go back over here real quick and refresh our server health and see what that did to it. So our CPU usage is still spiked out at max, as you can see, and then the RAM has a little bit higher, I believe. So no real change there, but you can see a small little server like this is not going to be able to take much in the way of load testing like this. So let's go back over here and instead of 25 clients per second for a minute, let's drop this down to something like five. Even five a second for 60 seconds is quite a bit. You would have to get some kind of you know, news article or some sort of promotional thing that drives a surge in traffic to your website. But if you have some kind of client or a project you're working on where you anticipate that, this is where a tool like this is going to shine. So let's go ahead and run this again with just five per second now, and we should be able to have this run pretty cleanly. So you can see our success count right here is climbing by five every second, which is cool. So everything looks like it's working well, and you can kind of see the response time here. So it does make sense the response time is going up quite a bit. But so far, it looks like our server is able to handle this. So let's see if it can complete the test. So there we go. That test completed successfully. So we had 240 total connections to the site five every second for a minute, which is still a ton. And as you can see, the server was able to handle that. So if we go back over to Cloudways real quick, let's see if it had any impact on our server health. So the CPU usage is still spiked, which makes sense considering the number of connections. And that also kind of jives with what we were seeing as far as the latency goes in about the 5,000 milliseconds. Just based on the sheer number of connections coming through to this tiny little server, it does make sense. Obviously our RAM usage is much more happy. So this would be a very CPU and bandwidth focused kind of test. Now what I wanna do is switch over to this other site. So this was a demo site that I made a while back that's actually on a different server. So for those of you that saw the Oxygen Dark Mode video, this will look familiar to you, but this is on a four gigabyte Vulture server instead of a one gigabyte. So this has more RAM and it also has a bunch more processing power. So I'm curious to see how far we can push this one. So I'm gonna switch back over here and then I need to go to target hosts delete this one and let's add the new one. So I got that other domain verified and what I wanted to do real quick is give you a sense for how these servers differ in terms of their resources. So this one gigabyte server is one gig of RAM, 25 gigs SSD, a terabyte of transfer every month, and then a one core processor. And what we're about to try is this four gig one. So four gigs of RAM and a two core processor. So we should have slightly better results, maybe not wildly different, but I would imagine it's gonna be a far bit better than this one gigabyte. So let's go back over here to our load test and we're gonna call this one our four gigabyte test. And then I think 250 clients over the course of a minute is probably still quite a bit. Let's go back over here to clients per second. And you remember we did five per second pretty successfully. Considering this server is four times as powerful, you know, on paper, I guess, as the other one, maybe let's just go like 20 and see if this server can handle 20 per second for a minute. So we'll run this test. So far our test is going reasonably well. There was a spike in latency right there at the beginning, but it is going. So let's see if this test makes it all the way to the end. One thing I noticed right off the bat is that our latency is far, far lower. So we were looking at almost five seconds before, you know, it was 5,000 milliseconds, but right in here, right now we're at 58 and 60 in that region. We do have a steady 20 clients a second active. So everything looks much more smooth. And I guess just the way that these servers scale as you go up in plans, they just become significantly more powerful. So as you can see, our test here completed successfully. And something that's really interesting is we did have this spike in latency right here at the beginning, but that was in the first second of the test. So I wouldn't really call that necessarily reliable data. But if we come down here, we do have a pretty steady 20 clients a second. It does briefly pop to 21. And then of course, at the end of the test, it drops off. But in that, our latency never really goes above like 62 here, 63 which is interesting because on the other server, we were looking at like 5,000 milliseconds of latency, which again, to my point earlier, that little tiny server probably was just struggling to keep up with the amount of connections. Whereas this server having, you know, probably realistically more than four times the capacity in terms of CPU power is just much more adept at handling this kind of load. So really interesting here because we set it to 20 clients a second for a minute, which gave us 1200 successful connections, which is an absolutely massive amount. So one of the biggest sites that I have gets a few hundred visitors a day, you know, so effectively that's spread out over 24 hours, not over 60 seconds. So that gives you a sense for how far these servers can really be pushed. The consideration here would be how much bandwidth are you actually going to use in that? So you can see we have a sent and received here. So 150 megabytes of usage across those 1200 connections. 
That's probably not the most well-optimized site, but I also didn't give any thought to optimization on that site. So that is really a, another piece of this puzzle for you to consider. It's not just how powerful your server is, it's whether or not your site is as optimized as it can be so that your you know, bandwidth utilization is at a reasonable number when you have these surges in traffic. Now what I wanna do though is push this even further. So we successfully did 20 and the server really didn't seem to be bothered by that all that much. So can we jump to 50 a second per minute? Let's see. So far so good. So we're doing 50 per second over the course of a minute on this four gigabyte server and things are going reasonably well so far. And there we go. So this one actually can handle 50 a second for, for a minute straight, which is pretty amazing. So that really shows us that these servers are not just a linear scale in terms of their you know, power output or something like this. We're doing way, way more than we did. In fact, we're doing 10 times what we did on that other test successfully on the one gig server. And on paper, this server is only four times as powerful. I know it's not as easy to measure it like that because that's not how processors work. And also there could be other variables like RAM and all that kind of stuff, but realistically, I just wanted to see how far we can push this. So let's go take a look at our server utilization now. So it's really interesting, as you look at this graph right here, you would think, hmm, I don't even know if the test hit this server. Did it really even work? But if you switch over here to the details tab, you can see where these tests were running and it barely even blinked that CPU. It's crazy, it only dropped down to 96%. What we need to do now is just push it even more hardcore. So let's go from 50 to 250 and let's see if it can handle that. So probably pretty unrealistic here. And granted, I'm not like a server administrator, so don't take my word as fact here, but I'm just really testing this because I've always wanted to just see how it worked and maybe this is valuable to you. Let's just go ahead and run this. So far it's going reasonably well. This is kind of blowing my mind. We're already at 4,000 connections, which is just insane. I wish I could get 4,000 visitors to my website. Wow, so I honestly didn't think this test was going to complete successfully, but as you can see, it did. So what that gives us is 15,000 connections over the course of 60 seconds, which is pretty amazing. So in that time, it used 1.83 gigabytes of bandwidth, so it says, and our response times really aren't that bad here, which is really interesting to me. We had a couple spikes but you can see the min max and the average here is pretty consistent. So I'm reasonably happy with that. So if you think about the fact that we just did 250 clients every second for 60 seconds, we're now doing 25 times what we did on that one gigabyte server, which is just kind of bewildering to me. So it makes me think on those higher versions of Cloudways servers, you know, if you have a 16 or a 32 gigabyte server, how much, how much traffic can those servers actually handle? I feel like it's a massive amount. Wow, so it says our CPU usage is at 10%, so that means it dropped down to about 90% of total available you know, resource power. So it just, like, how, how hard can you actually push this? I wanna do one more test, and let's just go ridiculous here. So let's go 1,000. I'm not even sure this free plan is going to allow this, but I'm gonna try. So now we're actually getting somewhere. You can see that our latency is much, much higher than it was before. So somewhere in that 250 to 1,000 concurrent users every second is where this particular server is gonna really start to struggle. Wow, so it completed successfully and it averaged out to a 600 millisecond response time here with 41,000 connections over the course of that 60 seconds. That's absolutely insane. So I mean, even though this is about a two millisecond response time, it's really not that bad. I mean, you still have to factor in your actual website load time into that. But if you're getting a thousand visitors a second for a minute sustained or, you know, for any length of time, I feel like it's still probably going to be fairly usable. It may not be. And again, I'm no expert in this, but it is really interesting. Let's refresh and see if there's any impact here. Okay, so there is our CPU usage at 100%. So our RAM usage did go up. It says it's problematic, probably because it's gonna start dropping connections and things are gonna be slower. So I would say that we found kind of the threshold of this four gigabyte server. I would say based on what we saw with the previous test at 250 clients over a minute, that it's probably in the like 400 realistically, somewhere in that region. But that's just such a massive amount of traffic that I don't think it's realistic for you to be concerned with something like that. And if you are, you probably have a server administration team and you know people that have that ability for you. So hopefully this gives you a sense for what kind of server you might need. But in any case, I've wanted to do this particular video for quite a while now. You've kind of watched me explore this in real time. So hopefully this was cool. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a future video.